Hello and welcome everybody to um, yet another OpenShift Commons Big Data SIG. Um, today we're going to talk about Apache Spark running natively on Kubernetes on OpenShift. Um, Eric Erlinson has been um, doing a lot of work on this behind the scenes, so we're real happy to have him to deliver this talk today. Um, if you are going to be um, at KubeCon next week or at the OpenShift Commons gathering, he'll be there as well. Um, if you haven't heard about the OpenShift Commons gathering, time is coming up soon. It's next week, November 7th, um, the day before KubeCon starts, which is November 8th and 9th. Um, so ping me in the chat and I'll, I'll make sure you have the details on how to get a hold of us and some classes to get there. Um, and so I'm going to, without further ado, let Eric start. The format for this whole um, session, it's a SIG session, is that we're going to let Eric give his talk. You can ask questions in the chat, um, and then I'll open up the mics after the talk, and we can have a conversation. So um, without further ado, Eric, um, take it away. Thanks, Diane. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Eric Erlinson, and I'll be talking about uh, running Spark natively on uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. I'm a software engineer with the Emerging Technologies Group, and I'm working on the uh, DICON project, of which this work is a component. And uh, here's the uh, various email and Twitter handles you can reach me at here. So I'm going to begin with uh, some very brief review of some properties of Apache Spark. Um, it's in the business of being a, a commodity scale out compute model, um, which is to say it you know, runs compute on many cheap machines. Um, it's based on a declarative uh, computing formalism. So you tell it what to compute, and its job is to figure out the details of how and where. Um, and it does all this based on a, a data structure called the uh, Resilient Distributed Data Set, uh, the RDD. Um, so what does the distributed component mean? It means that uh, you have a logical view where you have an application and it's working with you know, a single monolithic data set. But in reality, the physical um, situation is that your app is running on a master process and your data is actually being shared across uh, different executor processes. So anybody familiar with Hadoop um, will be uh, pretty uh, comfortable with this idea. Um, what does the resilient component mean? Um, so RDDs all contain their own compute lineage. They know how to recompute their values. Um, furthermore, they're immutable, um, which means essentially that when you compute them, they're referentially transparent. There are no compute side effects. So these two properties uh, combine to uh, make recovery of lost data uh, very, very easy. Um, so what does this look like in a concrete example? Uh, suppose I have here some integer data residing on some executors, and I want to uh, apply a function to it to double all those values. So the master ships that function off to all the executors and then executes. And we can see that it doubled the data. Um, so what happens if, say, an executor gets lost? Um, the master knows how to recompute this. It basically, once it finds another executor, it produces the original data, reships the function, and reapplies. So the situation is a good fit for pods in a, a container management system. You can have your application running on a driver pod, and each executor can also occupy its pod. Now, it's not perfect, but it is good. Um, the reason it's not perfect is because executors are not quite pure cattle. Uh, each executor, um, as you can see from the previous example, has different parts of the data. However, it's still a good fit because Spark is able to recompute the lost data. And so if you happen to lose um, an executor pod, Spark will recover that um, if you replace it. So it acts almost like cattle, just not quite. Um, that is really all I'm going to talk about Spark. Um, anybody who knows will know that's a whole universe unto itself. So here are a couple of... Uh, breadcrumbs for learning, learning more about Apache Spark and also learning about uh, my group's vision for uh, Spark running on Kubernetes and OpenShift. 
So in a diagram, um, how does this uh, submission work? You have a client, which might be running on, say, just a terminal outside of your uh, cluster. And it spins up a driver pod from outside. And in that, it's running a uh, scheduler backend, uh, which is a component of Spark, which is semi-pluggable. Um, and its job is to spin up the actual executor pod. So the scheduler backend is essentially managing executor life cycles. Um, now, what does uh, Spark on Kubernetes uh, currently look like? Um, it's a collaboration we're engaged with with some guys at Google. Um, upstream, the intent is for it to be a new Apache Spark uh, sub-project, kind of like a Mesos uh, support is now. Um, the code is using the uh, Fabricate uh, Kubernetes client library. And architecturally, it's basically producing two new uh, scheduling subclasses, uh, the Kubernetes cluster scheduler, which is in the business of creating the uh, driver pod from outside the cluster. And then the Kubernetes cluster scheduler backend is actually running on the driver pod from inside, and it's creating the executor pods. Um, so the cluster submission parameters relating to uh, OpenShift are, of course, the uh, cluster URI which is just your API endpoint. Um, and then, of course, you have to give it a, a Spark image, um, which is used by both the scheduler and the backend. And uh, those are for producing pods, having container images that have Apache Spark installed on them. Um, you also have to give it a namespace, um, which you can default if you're just in like Kubernetes. But in OpenShift, this really matters. And of course, it's used by the submission client in the scheduler, it defines scope for authorizations and uh, supports uh, non-admin submissions. Um, and lastly, you also want to give it a service account name, and that's used from the driver pod inside by the back end. Um, and it authorizes that pod to actually create the executor pods. So at this point, I'm going to uh, break out of this for a minute and give you a very short demo. Um, I have here queued up a Spark submission um, and a running uh, cluster. And you can see here, I am giving it uh, the uh, classic Spark Pi application, which is like Spark's Hello World. Um, I'm giving it uh, the namespace, which is just sort of the usual my project. Um, here's the images, which are some custom images that I spun up uh, for running on OpenShift. And it's synced up, of course, with the local Spark build on my machine. Um, and then I also uh, gave it a uh, jar file. And somewhere in here should be the uh, actual uh, the actual name of the um, Spark, Spark uh, surface account that I gave it here. So anyway, if I uh, give it a uh, kick it off. You can see it's producing a, a driver pod and it's running. And the driver pod just kicked off an executor. And it's a very short process, so it's already done. And there's nothing but but the driver pod. So if I go in here and look at the log, Somewhere down here far enough, you should see the value of pi being output. Well, at this uh, font size, it's actually hard for me to find the value of pi. But uh, anyway, you can see that it actually completed successfully. And somewhere in here, the value of Pi got output here, so I'm going to kick out of this and go back to the uh, presentation. Um, so what's next on the roadmap? Uh, one thing I'm interested in is uh, supporting persistent volumes. Um, you know, it's an important feature from uh, OpenShift's point of view, and you've got to give it a, some kind of persistent volume claim from the command line and uh, some corresponding mount point. Um, my particular vision for this is probably they're going to be read many and maybe write once because we don't want to be porting all kinds of output on them. That's not efficient. Um, hey, take care, man. 
the uh, so I think another byproduct of this is if you have your data mounted this way, you can actually push your volume secrets to the cluster and users don't have to get involved with that. Um, now, non-persistent volumes are of course also an option, but you have to give the secrets uh, at submission time. Um, there's a whole bunch of interesting options for uh, executor pod management. Um, you know, you can use a straight replication controller for just static executor scaling. Um, if you want elastic executors, uh, horizontal pod auto scaling ought to work really nicely, <clears throat> provided we can get the right uh, custom metrics going. Um, if you want to support elasticity plus multi-tenancy and like fair sharing across applications, I think you're gonna have to use a custom controller to do that because it needs a bit more global information. Um, and also I think, you know, this is basically working purely from the command line currently, but you know, you can obviously kick off a driver pod from a console running on OpenShift. Um, you know, the current Washinko project, which uh, my teammates have been working real hard on is, you know, a great model for that kind of capability already. And uh, lastly, uh, the state of the code here, the base branch is by this fellow Anirudh Ramanathan, and uh, he's working out of Google. And I've been posting my updates uh, as a pull request. And um, the actual images are on my uh, Docker account there. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Perfect. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about the Yoshinko project and what that is? Yeah, um, Oshinko is, um, uh, let the teammates stop me if I start saying things that are wrong, but uh, it will uh, it will spin up a Spark cluster from inside the console. And um, I think you can also now run apps against it. Um, it's not working exactly natively. What it's doing is producing a static um, standalone cluster using pods. It looks fairly similar to what I did, but it's not, uh, it's not driving it from down inside the code. It's sort of working on it uh, from exterior. Okay, cool. I um, look forward to seeing that soon. So I'm going to open it up for questions and unmute folks. Um, Michael, you're unmuted, and Trevor and Will B, I've unmuted you. Um, if you want to add um, some other stuff from your point of view on the team, um, and if anybody else would like to get unmuted, just um, raise your hand in chat, and I'll do that. Uh, I agree with what uh, Eric said about Oshinko. That was pretty right on. So this this project, so it is still um, a work in progress, from what I from what I'm gathering. Um, are you looking for more people to test it and contribute to it? Um, how are you looking to get feedback on it? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think you could actually use it. Um, it's now, like I said, I got it working properly uh, against OpenShift, and so um, if anybody is interested in actually, you know, dog fooding this, uh, definitely get in touch with me. I think we could actually do that. And you'll be at the the upcoming KubeCon event, so I'm sure we'll get a few people interested in that, and um, maybe we can even get you into the the Red Hat booth to do a, a demo of it um, there if people want to um, check it out. Okay, if there's any other questions for um, Eric at this point, anyone's got some? I'm just curious if other people who are um, working on Apache Spark, if if these um, images that you have created um, here are the, are the same ones that they're using or what, what you've done to customize these, um, these images. If, that you that you have here. Um, the two chief customizations are they just happen to be based on builds with this new sub project in them, um, and I guess the other difference is I tweaked some of the uh, kind of like startup logic a little bit to allow it to uh, at runtime pull down the application jar file into something then without having to open up permissions like all over the place. Okay. So that sound, sounds kind of interesting um, and the templates for that might be 
where they would find that in those special tweaks if they wanted to create their own? Um, I guess I didn't put this on here, but if people are interested, um, just reach out to me and I can show you. I also have a branch of the OpenShift uh, Spark uh, repo where you know my little custom customizations on the Docker file are, and I can show people where all that is and um, how to build this stuff. It's relatively standard, except for the uh, existence of the new subproject. That sounds sounds like a good idea. So I think it sounds like good fodder for um, an actual blog post um, and to get something up there and writing in the doc set as well. So we'll um, have to work on getting that once it gets a little bit um, closer to um, production time. And, and do you expect this to be something that's in a production release? Um, I think, well, based on the classic model, you know, we're going to have to basically put this into an official Apache Spark PR at some point, and then they're going to have to, you know, get it onto their roadmap. And um, it's not clear to me how long that cycle is going to take. Um, yeah. yeah. From my point of view, a lot of the stuff I really wanted um, was to get it working against uh, OpenShift proper. And so that's going. Um, some of these other features. Um, I think we could work on prioritizing and try to get this as a PR, you know, pretty soon. And I'm not sure, you know, I'm not totally sure what Google wants to see over and above what's currently there. And that would be interesting to get Arinda to, to come on and talk about his work as well. I was really hoping that these guys would be at KubeCon, but neither of them are going to be, so. Uh -huh. Well, then what we'll have to do is reach out to them and get them to come and, and do another talk sometime in the not too distant future on uh, on this and see see where they're going. But um, And then I'm, I'd love to get um, something that showcases the Oshinko work um, up and available for people to take a look at as well. So um, if you can put up the slide with your contact information in it, again, maybe that was your very second or third slide so people can oh. find you, that would be... Great, and we can end on that. And um, there you go. So if folks want to find Eric and work with him on this project, this is um, how to get a hold of him. Uh, he will be at the OpenShift Commons gathering November 7th in Seattle, and um, he's also attending the KubeCon event that's coming up. So um, please look for him there, and um, if you can't find him, find me, and um, I will help you find the other members of the OpenShift um, Commons Big Data. So um, Will Benton is giving one of the talks um, on the day. Um, and there'll be an OpenShift Big Data SIG lunch um, meetup. Um, so definitely bring your questions and um, come join us there. Uh, hey, Diane. Yes. Yeah, this is Mike McEwen. Um, I, I'll put a link in chat here to a video I made um, that shows Oshinko and one of the applications we've been working on. This is uh, for a talk I'm giving at Apache Big Data in a couple weeks. Um, so if people want to see like Oshinko working or something, that's, um, you know, they can watch the video. All right, there you go. Um, that would be awesome. And I will add that into the, um, the blog post that goes out um, and the email to the big data sig so people can find that. Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, when it's on Vimeo, that'll make it easy. All right, guys. Um, so thanks again for Eric for taking the time today to do this talk. And we will um, see you all um, in just a few days in Seattle. So I'm looking forward to that. Take care. Thanks.